So next talk will be uh, from my friend Sergei. Uh, he works for JetBrains. Uh, who of you know JetBrains actually? Oh, ooh, you see? <laughs> you don't have to say so much about JetBrains. So you probably know that uh, at JetBrains there are a lot of uh, interesting developers and we, we know this topic. Um, this is also something uh, I found out through um, talking to other UX designers so that this is a classic topic. Like it repeats. I, I would say like at every meetup and, and like every day they have this like uh, struggle to, to talk to developers and, and then I make this nice design and I said this it has to be a drop shadow with uh, three pixels uh, wide and 50% uh, of transparency and then they just do something and it's not exactly what I wanted and what the fuck and so on but um, yeah so I think this, this is just uh, the, the daily struggle some people um, probably uh, no, and um, but in general, I think Sergey can share some experiences, and uh, also I hope share some um, nice ideas how to solve the problems. So stage is yours. Thank you. <laughs> so hi, um, uh, I'm afraid Thomas already told half of my uh, presentation, mm -hmm. uh, like. So hi everyone, but I have it here in my slide, so I will talk to, through it anyway. Uh, my name is uh, Sergey Lin. I am from Ukraine. I'm a graphic and UX designer, and I work at JetBrains. Uh, so I have uh, an experience, uh, 14 years of experience. But uh, what's uh, interesting that all, almost all my experience I've got is from IT. I've been working shoulder to shoulder with IT for whole ch 14 years. Even more, I have two uh, master degrees in computer science, so IT naturally was my choice. So when I was approached by Thomas with his proposal to do an Ignite talk here, this theme actually popped up immediately in my head, and uh, despite a few hesitations, here I am telling you how to be loved by software developers. Now, as Thomas said already, uh, mm, I've heard lots of this type of talks, and uh, Lots of them are just bragging about how poor and uh, unprivileged designers are and how evil and ununderstanding developers can be. Actually, it is not true. Uh, well, it's only partially true, <laughs> but uh, during my years of service, I came uh, to a great deal of respect for them, and I want to share it with you. Of course, there are some general rules, like Thomas said, and I want to go through them, uh, through a few of them briefly because they're important and it's important that we share a uh, dictionary together. The most general of one is, of course, don't be afraid of talking. And I'm not just mean talking, I know it's way too generic, but what I mean is just grab your stuff, stand up and go to their desk, uh, bring some sketches with you, discuss things. And uh, along with uh, building up relationships and so on, this leads to my second point, involve them into your work. Not uh, just to discuss results, but to uh, involve people in decision making. Because when people feel invested in something, it's, it's uh, much harder for them to shit on it. Now, <laughs> see on this screen, uh, I had to create a new icon. Uh, this the, the left row of the icon, the old options. It's a new icon for a very old 10 years this action has been in, in the interface, so the new icon, you know, it's really painful because everybody loved it, of course. So actually what I did, I took the developer to my desk, we sat together and we went through all the options and naturally she picked uh, this, the, the second from the button icon by herself and uh, that was it. No arguing, no nothing, she just sold it to the team and yeah, that was it. Uh, the next rule will be, like Thomas had mentioned before, speak their language. And uh, you don't have to know Java, Python, or PHP, uh, but you have to understand just a little bit about uh, programming. Some, I don't know, JavaScript would be more than enough. Uh, now, I don't really, mm, uh, uh, I'd say believe, or I don't really met designers who are able to write uh, impeccable code while photoshopping some masterpiece. Are there any? No? You know, like with both hands? No? See, uh, but knowing the cost of implementation of your genius decisions to predict its scalability, to foresee how it might be done, uh, this is golden and it earns respect. Uh, so the last 
this last rule I just said. Uh, this leads me towards uh, my serious points. Uh, so, speaking their language is a good skill indeed, but uh, it is much better if you can think like them. Uh, now, I know this might sound a little bit crazy, but it's fa in fact, it's not that hard. Uh, the secret is quite simple. You have to structure your thoughts, and uh, the most important, you have to structure your output. So, if the developer is not your best buddy, not your comrade in arms with who you've been working for years, you know, and, and you are a team, you do not slap some mock-ups in front of him. Uh, you might want to make a little presentation, not like this one, but uh, small and personal will do the job. And uh, at the end of it, your work most probably will be understood and accepted. Uh, it especially goes in some hard cases. Now, as an another example, I want to give, I want to play with you some role play. Uh, you all will be a developer, and I will be a designer, uh, presenting you with my work. And what I like about it that you all will be silent, and I will do the talk because you know I'm doing the talk here. <laughs> You're just listening. Uh, so you gave me this task. It's not very really clear. It's lots of words and stuff, but it has. In all times, it has all information needed. And after some cleanup, we actually been doing together. Uh, we can do some. Uh, we can make it more clear for both of us. Uh, sometimes even this thing. I mean, going through the task, it's uh, one third of the solution. Uh, so this would be my first slide of my presentation to you. The simplified task we agreed upon on. And uh, now I know that. All of us are stealing stuff, you know, just we call it inspiration. So we go to Behance or Dribble or whatever and we take stuff from there. And don't be afraid of sharing this stuff with developers. So I'm sharing this with you. Like I, I've done some research. It's another fancy word for that. I've done some research and I saw this kind of loaders, but they are all just, you know, loaders. And uh, so I picked a less intrusive one and I picked something that is also live, but it's more like status. And here, what I came with, you know, it's like, it's not a loader, it's a status, and yet it's a living thing. Uh, now I ju will just say it, it's important to show your work in its environment, so now I'm gonna say, uh, I mean, uh, now I'm gonna say that it sell, so, sells some po solves some points, it does not so solve some other points, but uh, for instance, it will save us three sc setting screens which will save you, my dear developer, two days of work, and it always make people happy. Uh, in, uh, the next thing is also good to save your failed design attempts. Having them on hand may save you some time and show that you've been through some options yourself, not just this little thing on the fourth slide took you a whole day of work. But this is just in case of emergency, just in case of some dispute will be a reason. Now, uh, I know, uh, no, I, I won't go there. Uh, so, yeah, I know, I still, um, I know that there, is some, there are some rules, like how many uh, options you should provide. Once, some say one, some say a few of them, three, like make the first one the best one, the second one the same, but red, and the third one is a shitty one, and come with this, but don't do this, I don't believe in this, I believe that one, uh, one result, but with the proper presentation, with proper work behind it, will do the job. So this is how my tiny presentation, how your tiny presentation may, may look like. It's nothing special, but now uh, you, as this role play developer, feel a little bit involved, and uh, we've been working on stuff together, and uh, we work as a team, and now it's hard to dispute, you know, within the team. And while it's all sounds cool and exciting, there is a big but to it, and uh, uh, the thing is, it's important not to spoil developers. Uh, I, I've been talking to some uh, um, product managers uh, in JetBrains and I've been about how do you work with designer and stuff, and uh, the most, uh, from several of them, uh, I won't be naming teams, I got this uh, feedback that uh, sometimes when uh, team got access to a designer or designer team, they stopped being working. You know, like, uh, oh, I asked them to provide me with some sketch and that's it. And, and they're still sitting and waiting, and this is not nice. So 
if you will be running around like little blue genie making nice and lovely presentation about every icon, soon enough you will be creating sketch after sketch for every button state on every pop-up dialogue and that sucks. I, I've been in this situation, it, it really sucks, it's easy to burn out. To avoid this, all you have to do is uh, learn how to say no. <laughs> no, actually I'm joking, you have to educate your developer. Uh, not much, but as little you should know about development, they should not do the same about the design. It's a two-way road, and uh, even if they read, like, I don't know, colors for dummies or Photoshop in three days, it does count. And uh, you have to educate them gently, uh, do it while you're working together on something, and pretty soon you will be a team in which it is pleasant to work. Uh, here's another example. Uh, last month I've been to a designer conference uh, by DesignConf in Bratislava, and there was this guy, Jonathan Lee, he's a lead designer at Google, and he and his team also happened to be a creator of uh, material design guidelines. I think lots of you have seen them. So, but he didn't just sit there and created some guidelines out of nowhere. He started with redesigning Gmail, uh, this, you know, red button and lots of white space uh, and stuff, and soon enough developers loved this uh, stuff and they started to line up uh, at, at his door asking to do the same design for their applications and Google has millions and tons of applications from inside and uh, for inside and outside as well. Uh, so uh, pretty soon this guy felt swamped and he hired some new guys and uh, those new guys also felt swamped at some point. So they created material guidelines and this is how he educated his developers at, uh, at whole Google team. You can only imagine how many people there. Now, this uh, creating guidelines might seem a little bit too far, but here is more. He even created application uh, for internal use, uh, but then it went, I think, outside. Uh, in this developer uh, uh, application, developer was able to pick some primary and secondary color and slap some buttons on the form. Uh, the application was creating the form by itself, you know, just with header and stuff. So he doesn't spend time much on designing every little thing. Uh, my next uh, general rule might sound a bit like it's more from family counseling and it sounds like do not fight. Now I'm going to say something more enlightening. Uh, there is nothing to fight about. Uh, it's simple actually. Uh, the thing is that both of your interests are aligned. Uh, you both, both of you want all the best for the product. Now I created this little table of um, interests and as you can see they totally identical nobody wants to hurt product nobody wants to hurt your common work given that in mind you can safely conclude that arguing won't help because since you both want good for the product the arguments from both sides will be actually good and uh, what you have to do in that situation you have to take a break break if the heat is high you know if it's just about to scream or there is some screaming and uh, after the break, you have to acknowledge your roles and positions. Uh, for instance, get to know how much space and flexibility developer have. Uh, maybe he's fighting because he has some cruel team lead or whatever, or timeline. And uh, acknowledge why are you fighting. Maybe it's just your ego hurts and after... Uh, and after a break, you re you'll realize that if you're in position of strength, don't push too hard, or at least for too long. If you feel pushed, tell this immediately and tell how uncomfortable this makes you feel. And uh, talk from I position, because uh, not, some, not from some silly, you know, Steve Jobs done that, or Elon Musk says that position, because it never works. Because you cannot speak for Elon Musk, you can always speak for yourself. Uh, CI is always working because it's honest and uh, using all this you will be heard, respected and finally loved. Uh, that's uh, all I have to say at least in 10 minutes span. So thank you all very much.